Hey guys, Michael J. Crawford, the Anti-Trekker here, and welcome to part one of season two of the original series section of Journey Through Star Trek. Real quick, I wanted to say, yes, I'm changing up the format a little. Not a lot, but a little. Obviously, I ditched the vertical format for now because, frankly, it's a bitch to edit in properly, and I didn't really see an advantage to having it in the YouTube Shorts format as far as views or anything. Also, I changed the music, not because I'm planning on doing this any more seriously than before, but I wanted something that I could adjust for the time so that if I wanted to make the video a little longer, a little shorter, I can adjust the music to fit. Because, let's be honest, some episodes need a little bit more description than others. If you have any strong feelings as to the format itself, let me know. But for now, let's get right into it. Today, we're covering Season 2, Episode 1, A Mock Time. This is the episode where we find out that every seven years, adult male Vulcans go into Pon Far, which forces them to, much like Salmon, return to their homeland and spawn or die trying. And since this is Spock's very first Pon Far, um, Wait a minute, does that mean that by Vulcan standards, Spock was actually prepubescent when he was serving under Pike? That would actually explain some of the emotional outbursts we saw in both the cage and where no man has gone before, because he hadn't hit space puberty yet. <laughs> Well, that makes sense. But it would not explain how any other Vulcans could be serving in Starfleet among humans if humans generally didn't know about Ponfar before this. And Spock said pretty clearly that Vulcans don't talk about it with non-Vulcans. Thing no outworlder may know. Except those very few who've been involved. Vulcan understands, but even we do not speak of it among ourselves. S so it's still kind of a problem. Well, Spock needs to go to Vulcan or die, and Kirk's boss, who is a complete jerk... Sir, the delay would be at most a day. I can hardly believe... You will proceed to Altair 6's order. Subject is closed. You have your orders. Starfleet out. Kirk, being awesome, decides to go to Vulcan for Spock's wedding anyway. It's very impressive, very diplomatic, but it's simply not that vital. You can't go off to Vulcan against Starfleet orders. You'll be busted. I can't let Spock die, can I, Vulcan? Well, this is where we meet T'Pring, who is a total bitch. She makes Spock and Kirk fight to the death, giving us the most iconic shirt rip in Kirk's entire career. Well, McCoy rigs the fight with some of his space drugs and tricks everyone into thinking Kirk is dead. So all is well. But, you know, come to think of it, T'Pau, the one person who turned down a seat on the Federation Council, shows up for Spock's wedding, but not his own parents? Wow. You wanna be in a galaxy where Star Trek is a lane. You wanna go where everybody knows your name. 